wife and myself to eat. After he filled up his belly, he's not so hungry anymore. He says, I sold it. Wasn't that crazy for selling it for this, for this bowl of, 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 of lentil soup? Isn't that crazy? So then he has to come up with a new, with a new philosophy. In other words, really, he really didn't despise the Bechara in the beginning. But after he fell into the, after the Yitzhak trapped him and caught him and got him to sell it, he had to, he had to, he had to, he had to do something. He had to, he, had to, he, had to, he had to defend himself. So he made himself a philosophy, I hate the Bechara, I despise it. Well, Yitzhak does it all the time. Yitzhak convinces you to do something, you fall into the trap, and later on you say, that was pretty stupid, I fell into that trap. So much of the whole stupid, the whole thing was stupid. In other words, you make a philosophy up as a, as a defense. In other words, you, 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 the Yitzhak can catch us. So I was looking at the book of Juggler and the King, all the ways the Yitzhak can catch you. So many ways the Yitzhak can catch you. But he catches you, convinces you it's not so bad, he convinces you maybe it's a mitzvah, but whatever he convinces you. After you do it, you have to, you have to defend yourself. Why was, why was I so stupid? I had a whole thing to study. You make a whole philosophy why it's, not, why it's true. Why would I do this true? It's very powerful to think about how, how can it can be done. And that's what Esav is. Esav <coughs> is, 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 is uh, the man of David the Yetzirah. You know, it's a famous thing, I'm going to just read a little bit. Where Byron Kutler says, this is about this Parsham. He says, we definitely don't understand the Parsham in its entirety. They say that anybody who ever saw the Vilna Gain, saw the Vilna Gain, could never be a Russian. So how is it that Esav grew up in, in, in Yusuf's house? And was that was Esav. So, he says that Esav wasn't the kind of Russia you think he was. And, the, uh, and another kasha he has, another good kasha, it was Yaakov, Yitzchak Avinu wasn't a fool. He wasn't a fool. He, he knew his sons. And he said Yitzchak's idea was that Klai Yisrael needs someone to take care of the Gashmias and someone to take care of the Ruchnias. Because so Yaakov, I see, is the Tzad, they can take it to Ruchnias. Esav is much more involved in Om Hazen. He'll take care of the Gashmias. He thought there will be a good Shinach. Esau will take care of the Gashmias, and Esau will take care of the Ruchnias. That was, his, that, was, that was Yaakov's idea, but Yitzchak's idea. Problem is, Esau was beyond that. He, he, he didn't even care about the other side of the Ruchnias. I mean, he didn't do anything blatantly, but he didn't care, he didn't care enough about the other side. And, and Rivka was able to see through that. She was able to see, it's not a good shidduch. It's not like Yisachar and the Bulan, that Yisachar supports the Bulan. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. Esau could never work together with Yaakov. So Rivka was able to see this, and then obviously she was right, because that's what happened. So that's something to think about. In other words, the original plan was a different plan that, that, Yaakov, that Yitzchak would have wanted. But Esau wasn't up to the plan. He, wasn't, he, was, he was too magusha, right? I don't think he did anything blatantly in front of his father, even though it says he took wives from him. Didn't let him but obviously, he, he, must have, he must have made his father think of it. an interesting thing here. I want to tell you, discuss with the Ramban, a very interesting Ramban. Another story. So uh, Yitzhak tells Esau, go and go, go hunt for me and bring me back this and second bracha, give you a bracha, which is also an interesting thing, why, the, why he needed a bracha. But he wanted him to keep it over aim and uh, to give a tzaddik to eat is, 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 a, is a bracha. And there's another shows you could say that, that, that the fact that he gave him to, to eat food all the time was the reason why Yaakov, Yitzhak didn't see clearly and how easily we can be bribed. Even a tzaddik like Yitzhak can be bribed a little bit by a little, you get a little present from somebody, you don't look at it the same way. But anyway. So uh, Yitzhak, Yitzhak tells Esav to do that. Rivka overhears, and Rivka says, "Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to dress you up as Esav, and you're going to get the bracha instead." So uh, at the end, well, as as he walks in, so, uh, so Yitzhak feels. He says a famous famous word. He touched him. The voice is Yaakov's voice. But it's but it's but it's but it's but it's but it's Esau's hands. It's furry. It was, was hairy. So Ramban says, "Dani Tama, I'm Bikash. Eichlo pachad mi heker akol. Why did Yaakov? Why, Yaakov wanted to trick his father. Obviously, his mother said, "Trick your father." So why was he going to recognize my voice? The whole bnei adam nikar bekolom. People are recognizable by their voices. Kemoshem ur baizino heich sumo buter biyishto. How is a blind man permitted to go to his wife? Maybe it's not his wife, right? Or even how can a regular man be ever to his wife at night when he can't see? Right? And the answer is, I recognize the voice. Right? You know somebody's voice. You know who's calling your name. Everybody recognizes him. And if me and you can recognize the voice, 
my year be Yitzchak Achokim Vavokim Lafir Ben Bonov. How could it be that Yitzchak that Yitzchak Avinu couldn't recognize the voice of his kids? Shudei Lo Be'emes to be Yitzchak B'Kolom. Ulai Hayu Al. So he says it's two roots of Ulai Achim Ma'elu Domim B'Kolom. It could be they're twins, so they had similar voices. V'lachen Amr Akol Kol Yakov. The Varb Shem Aduper Beloshim Rako. Umask Yishem Shemayim. You know, he didn't recognize the voice. In other words, maybe Yitzhak, maybe Yaakov had a similar voice to Esau, or maybe he was able to, to, to take Esau's voice, right? But he, he, he didn't speak like Esau, because he says two things. He says, he says, he says, how did you get here so fast? Hashem was raining, right? And he says to his father, Kumna, please get up. See, when Esau comes in, he says, Kum, he doesn't say Kumna. Interesting thing. Rabbi Shem Namil says about Esau that he didn't, he wasn't a at his parents one hundredth one hundredth of the way Esau was Bechabit, Yaakov Avinu. Yitzhak Avinu. One hundredth. So you can ask the Kasha, the question of the Kasha. How, would, how would do you think Esau should have spoken to his father? He should have said that Hashem, Hashem brought me to, right? Yeah, it's, the Foshim say that he, he didn't use Hashem, he, 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 didn't, he didn't use Hashem's uh, name, and he says because yes, he didn't always use Hashem's name, because maybe you'll say, I'm not, I, I'm not clean, I was from the Sada, so he didn't use that. So, um, so, so the reason why why Yitzchok, why, 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 and, and we know that Esau was trying to fool his father. He asked him questions like, "Eich ma'chi Esau, Eich ma'chi Zamelch, how do you take Esau from salt?" He made his father his father was from. So why would he use Hashem's name? Why didn't he speak like a Yaakov? And he respected his father. So Yaakov, Yaakov says, "Kum no, please get up." And Esau says, "Kum." So why didn't why didn't why did not why did Yaakov not switch around the way he spoke? And why did Esau not switch around the way he spoke? In other words, Yaakov was trying to be Esau. So why are, you, why are you saying that Hashem helped me get here fast? Or why do you say Kumdav? That's not how Esau speaks. And Esau, who was the foolish father, why didn't he use Hashem's name more? And why did he say, why did he say, please get up? Why did he say, get up? Get up, old man. He didn't say, get up. Please get up. The Kasha is both of them. Why did they switch around? So I think it's from this Rambani, it's an unbelievable so An unbelievable so The what comes out of your mouth is really you. And it's very hard to change it. What you say is really you. In other words, Yaakov Avinu could never say to his father, Kum. He could never say that. He'd say, Kum, no. Esau, as much of, as, as good as he was in Kibbutz of Ein, couldn't say, please. Couldn't say, Kum, no. Yaakov Avinu couldn't say, couldn't say to his father, to his father, that, that, he, that Hashem didn't help him there fast. He could not say it. And Esau Avinu couldn't say that Hashem did help him. You are what you say. You know, everybody says, what's so bad about the nibble pad? Hey, what's so bad about the nibble pad? You see from this Ramban, what's so bad about the nibble pad? Because you, you, Yaakov, as much as he wanted to try to be Esau, couldn't bring himself to use the same words language as Esau, because it's not him. He couldn't say kumavi. He couldn't say kum, he had to say kumna. He couldn't use those words. And Esau couldn't trick his father by saying kumna. So imagine, you are, you are what you end up saying. And it's very, very hard to change that. And therefore, we have to be very, very careful what comes out of our mouth, because that's who we really are, right? What we say is who we are and how we say it. And the Khalil of Achas, we use nibble pat, it's a problem. And the of Achas, we, we say we speak of the wrong things, it's really who we are. No, and we can't even hide it. It's impossible to hide who you are by how you speak. So to take very seriously. The interesting Medrash. It says, Vayar is reyach begodov. Vayar is reyach begodov. He smelled the smell of his clothing. Rashi says, Pshat, he smelled the smell of Gadeg. Right? But the Padre says, in it, there's another Pshat. It says, Vayar is reyach begodov. He smelled the rebels. He smelled who the, who the rebels in Klai Yisrael? Who the rebels? Who the bad people? Yosef Meshita, like Yosef Meshita. Okay, Yosef Meshita, it's hard to know when it was. Okay, either with the Romans or the Greeks, right? Maybe it was the Greeks. They wanted to go to the Harabayas. They were a little afraid. They were a little afraid. There was a base on English. They were a little afraid to go in. They wanted to take the stuff out. Amro, Yikonis Mehem, who's going to go in? Uvahem Yukholek, Tichilo. Amrinan, Ol, Umashim Apik. So he says, whoever's going to go in there, whatever he gets, they're going to take out, you can keep. Okay? Nobody's ever ready to go in. 
This guy Yosef Bishita, I'm going in there. I'm not afraid. Nichnas v'otzi menorah shel zohav. He sees the beautiful menorah. He takes it out. Amrulei, they said to him, I'm darker shel head yet l'shtamish bo. You know, you took the menorah, but it doesn't look, this is not for a regular person. This thing is a really a massive thing, and it's so valuable. It's not for a regular person. Right? El ol's man at tinovus. Let's go back and get something else. Right? And whatever you take, you get. Low kibbal alof. He didn't want to do it. Let's lose some shloshim, shloshim, shnonim, low kibbal. He gave him a lot of money to go in there. He wouldn't do it. Omer lei, Omer, dai shi chasti lelokai pam achas, achasena pam achniya. It's enough I made my master, my lord, angry once. Should I make him angry again? Umaos, no. He wouldn't go back in. And the end of the story is that he was able to do it. Father Abba Mrs. Besson got him. So this guy was a, was a real traitor. He was going to go in and take something. And he goes in and he gets the menorah. He said, why do you have this? And they said, well, he couldn't answer. And, and they said, go back in. He said, I'm not going back in there. I did it away. One time is enough. I did, I did an error like that one time. Not, not again. So the kasha is, what happened? What changed? So I heard from uh, Rabbi Gamlul Rabinovich, the name of the Panabit Yerov. Follow Pshat, a very nice Pshat. When he walked into the base of Middush, for one second, that enough was to change him. The Kudusha of the base of Middush, means around the base of Middush, that enough changed him. And once he walked in for one minute, he couldn't, he couldn't go back there again. And the Panabit Yerov said, today there's no base of Middush. So what do we do? So he says, the base members did the same thing. So I, well, I would add one extra thing that the Chazan, that, that I'm not sure the Panabit Yerov said, in the base Medrash, and you're really there. You really use it. You really learn it. Go to base Medrash, you learn for a few minutes, you're not the same person anymore. And if you really take it seriously, you're not the same person. Our job, gentlemen, our collective job, is to use that base Medrash. Collective job is, there's a base Medrash, there's your bane. It's here. And it can really change you. You can go where nobody Khalila is as bad as Yosef bin Mishita was. A traitor, total traitor. But the one minute in the base of Middush totally changed the total trader. Imagine what, 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 what a one minute in, in the base of Middush could do to us for not total traders, we're not total traders. But as long as we take that one minute seriously. If we go into the base of Middush and we really want it to be effective on us, a tremendous effect on us. But we, have to, we have to make it want to work. And that's, that's really what's really important. What's really important at this point in our lives, gentlemen, is the decision. As we're here, halfway through the year, it's almost Hanukkah. Halfway through the year, we're here, and we decide we want to make it work. Do we decide we really want to do it? Or it's a nice thing to do. We'll pass the time this way, and we'll just continue with our lives the way it was. If we're not ready to say, listen, I'm here, and I really want it to work, and I'm going to jump in, it's not going to work. It's only going to work if we want it to work. I don't know what happened to him if he ever said that, but that's what's, I know it's true for us. I mean, the base of has the extra power, even if you if you don't know what you're doing. But for us, the power is it's the base of and it has tremendous power. There's a Torah, and I always say the Torah is a giant bulldozer. The Torah can change everything, but you gotta let the bulldozer in. And I'll tell you another thing: the bulldozer doesn't go everywhere. It's a great bulldozer, the Torah, but sometimes the bulldozer says it's not a place for me. Just like. Uh, you wouldn't use a Stradivarius violin to clean a toilet bowl, right? So you, the tar doesn't want to go certain places. So, so you, you got it, right? You wouldn't, right? You wouldn't, that was, that was, the tar doesn't want to go certain places. So we have to have two things. One is we have to decide ourselves, I want to go into that base better, I want it to work. And I got to make sure that I'm the kind of play the, 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 the tar should work on me. I can't be doing things that's not appropriate. Again, I don't want to be, uh, the tar the is the bulldozer. But the Torah doesn't want to go certain places. I want to make sure it's going to go. It's going to affect me. And I got to stay away from those things that will make me not be affected, like the Stradivarius violin that's not going to go to the toilet bowl. You want you don't want the Torah to avoid you. You want it to go into you. But each one of us, each one of you, each one of us, I'm one of you, is a, is a decision. I'm here. I'm going to make it work. I'm going to let go of all the garbage. A lot of garbage. That the company says all the time. Let go of all the garbage. I always say that that the beauty of Eretz Yisrael used to be total detachment from the old life, the old days. Yeah. I remind you sometimes when I was in the States, they said when they were in the yeshiva 25 years ago, there was one phone for everybody. 
And that's what it's like. There was no cell phones. There were no cell phones, right? And now the problem is your whole life is the palm of your hand. So you got to decide at one point, I'm ready to put the whole, the whole, my whole life away. I'm ready to hear what is going on now. I'm ready to jump in. Because as long as we're not going to do that, it's not going to work. And Torah can work. Torah is a true base. It's a, it's a bulldozer. Can really make real, real. Can really affect us. But we have to want to. We have to want to be affected. We have to say, listen, makes sense. I want to do it. I want to be there. The days are rolling past very quickly. It's coming already. Before you know it, we pour them. We place the yom. So I always say it, and, and 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 you know it's coming. And, and everybody, everybody was here last year. Knows it was true last year. It's going to be true this year. We each one of us has to decide that I'm here for a reason. And I'm going to make the reason work. And those who will decide will be matzliach beyond any any beyond their imagination, beyond their imagination. Because the Torah works. But those who don't decide, those who are laid, who are laid back. We're too little, too lazy. It won't work. And I think that if you if you if you take the the yeshiva, the schedule, not any more seriously than to, you had a job. Have a job. You can be very successful. Imagine if you had a job, and you walk in every day half hour late, leave a half hour early. How long you'd last at that job? If, I, if I'd be the boss, you wouldn't last a day. But some like nice people that day last a week. But 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 you're not gonna last a job. It's a job. I have a commitment. I made a commitment. If you asked every each one of you, last year at this time, if you want to go to Israel, what do you want to accomplish? You would have a whole list of what you want to accomplish. And now we ask you, are you accomplishing them? You may not answer yes to every question because you didn't let yourself go. You gotta let yourself go. You gotta say, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna throw myself into it. I'm really gonna do it. Some of us will won't do it and we'll have a whole philosophy why we don't have to. Like, like Asa, but you guys, it's a Bechara. I hate the Bechara. You'll come up, you'll give into the Yetzar, and you'll decide, you'll have a philosophy why it wasn't so bad to give the Yetzar. But is it real? Is it honest? Is it honest? Did you give it the Yetzar for the, for the wrong reasons? Each one of us, each one of you, has the ability to say, I'm going to be successful. Learning is not easy. No one ever said learning is easy. But learning is not as hard as you think it is. And the more you take it seriously, the more, the more you'll be able to do it. <coughs> the more it's important to me, the more you'll do it. I always ask, people ask, why did the Gedolim not forget anything? And the simple answer. Because it was so important to them. Things that are important you don't forget. And I'll close with a story that I heard from Rabbi Scheinberg. That's all. Now he was uh, a Mashkiach, he was the Mashkol in Shiva Chavetzchem for many years. And he used to live on the Lower East Side. And he said one Friday he was going back on the bus to the Lower East Side from, from Forest Hills. And he heard that the guys were discussing baseball statistics, batting averages. And then tremendous Bikiyas. And he asked them, he said, you know the baseball so well, why don't you know Gemara so well? Mm. And they, whatever they answered, they couldn't really answer. And he said, I'll tell you why. Because baseball is more important than the Gemara. If the Gemara would be important, at least as important as baseball, you would know the Gemara. I don't think after 120 years, they're going to ask you baseball statistics. I don't think so. They may ask you how many black demur you learned. What are you going to answer? 317 average. What are you, you going to answer when they ask you how many black demur you learned? And that's really the question. And I went to Bulavaya this week. I'm a very chashua woman. I'm a very chashua yichis. She's Ray Levine's granddaughter. Lazar Plachinsky was a very long model. Her Bulyashev's niece. Chaim Kanevsky's cousin. And really what they spoke about is the mysterious never she had for Limud Torah, for children, husband's Limud Torah, and his Abbas's Torah, for children's Limud Torah. And that was all that was important to her. And you know what? Nobody remembered, nobody even mentioned if she made good apple pie. Nobody mentioned all these other things, because nothing else is important. Right? I'm sure she made good apple pie. Maybe she was a good cook. Nobody mentioned it. She mentioned how much she loved learning, how much she wanted her kids to learn, how much she wanted her husband to learn. 
And what's important? And ask yourselves, ask yourselves, why did I come? Why am I wasting my time here? What am I doing here? Maybe I should go to college, maybe I should get a job, all these other things I can do. If I'm here for not the right reasons, if I'm here with not, with, with, if I'm not ready, I'm too lazy to make that commitment, then what's it worth? And it's time to think about it. Time to think whether we're going to be Asa or Yaakov. Right? They were twins. They brought the same way. But each one shows a different life. It's all, all to you. Asa wasn't born in Russia. And Yaakov wasn't born in Yaakov Avinu. They were born in the house of Yitzchak Avinu. And Asa became Asa, the father of Edom. They turned into Edom. And Yaakov became Yaakov. And each one of you has to decide, am I in Yaakov's camp or am I in Asa's camp? Guaranteed, I always guarantee that I have no problem guaranteeing, that the Rebbe Shlomo will see that you want to do it and you'll have tremendous hatzlach. But he has to see you want to do it. But if he doesn't see you want to do it, and wanting to do it has been trying to do it, really trying, it's not going to happen. And it means coming to Davani and coming to learn. And what, you know, I always say, you have to learn whether your Rebbe is here or not, whether your Chavrus is here or not. Learning is independent of anybody else. Of course, it's easier to have a Rebbe or a Chavrus. But if we know, that's the limits of learning. Otherwise, you kill your Rebbe, you kill your Chavrus, never have to learn again. So, so, learning is independent. And we have to decide, this is an important step we're going to make. Or not an important step we're going to make. The Hashem should give each one of us the insight and the feeling and the drive to do it right.